everybody. Kind of a different video today. I know it's been a while since we've talked, um, but I decided that uh, I was going to do a little video series on pick making, um, lock picking, tool making in general. Um, there's a lot of questions from newcomers or maybe people that uh, are less than mechanical, which is cool. No, no shame in that. About uh, how to make their own picks and and what they need to do that and what the process looks like. So I figured since I make a lot of my own picks, um, I would show you guys a very entry level way of doing it. Um, so you know, my father was a machinist and a tool maker. Um, taught me from a very early age that if, if you need a tool, um, you can probably make that tool, especially if you only need it one or two times. Um, otherwise you could, you know, prototype it, uh, and see if you like it before you go and buy something. Um, so I really take that to heart. Uh, when I got married, my father-in-law, uh, was also a machinist and kind of lived by the same idea. If you need a tool and you don't have the money to buy it, you probably got something laying around that will do. Um, we're going to keep it simple today, uh, and make, uh, some replacements for this guy and another one like it. Um, these were these were uh, copies of the fail safe number two and number five hooks. Um, I messed up the temper on them so they got super soft uh, and need to be redone. Um, so we're going to do that. So a few things you'll need. Um, first, you'll need some source of material for pick making. Um, there's a few of them that are very easily found. Um, the first being hacksaw blades, which is what we're going to use today. Um, they, uh, they're cheap. You get a, a two pack for like four bucks. Try to find the cheaper ones though. Um, the name brand ones tend to be super tempered, which makes them hard to work with. Um, another source of materials is feeler gauges and you can buy these at the auto parts store or harbor freight i think uh it's five bucks at harbor freight and you get a variety of sizes so if you don't care that all your picks are 0.019 or 0.020 you know if you don't mind a 0.018 a 0.019 a 0.20 pick this is a great source of material uh, and for five bucks you get a pretty big um pretty big selection um, some of them will also even come with brass, so you can make brass shims, but that's another show. Um, so we're going to use hacksaw blades today. Um, this hacksaw blade I measured out at 0.021, but I know that when I start hitting it with some sandpaper, I can get it down to 0.019 without really messing anything up. Um, so it's going to make an 019 hook. Um, before I move on, materials-wise, materials you don't ever want to use, used hacksaw blades. Used blades in general are the worst. Um, the reason being is that these bimetal blades, they've got two differing metals. There's the blade bit that's a very hardened, very carbon-high metal that hardens really hard. And the bottom is softer, uh, and that's what gives you your temper to, to bend. When you start using these and you're putting heat into it, you not only mess up the temper and the soft part, but you make the hard part more brittle and harder. So trying to grind these teeth off after they've been work hardened, I would rather take a shot to the jimmies by a soccer player <laughs> than try to carve those off because they get hard. I mean hard, very, very hard, and they don't like to come off. Um, plus, like I said, they're brittle. They get brittle. You can see this one's chipped. Um, just not good material for picks. If you're going to use hacksaw blade, use new hacksaw blades. Like I said, uh, these ones were $3.48 for a pair of them. Um, I've seen these guys, this other brand, uh, yellow and black brand. I don't know how well you can see that. It looks kind of washed out. Um, this yellow and black brand was three of them for $4. So you can find deals out there. Um, the dollar store, if you've got a dollar general or a dollar tree, something like that around your place, um, if they have them, they're going to be the cheap ones, which are actually the good ones for this. Uh, and they're going to be, well, a dollar. Uh, next tool we're going to need 
going to need to be able to measure. So I've got a six inch rule here. Um, yours doesn't have to be precision. I just happen to have that on hand. Uh, we are going to need some sanding drums for our Dremel. And we're going to need some cutoff wheels for our Dremel. Finally, I'm going to use this guy. This is a diamond burr. It's used for cutting glass, um, but it works really well for grinding these hard teeth off. So we'll use it for that. Um, a word about cutoff wheels. If you don't, if you've got a Dremel or a multi-tool or a rotary tool die grinder of some kind, and you don't have one of these new Easy Locks, <laughs> you need to go out and get yourself one of these. These are the easiest way I've seen in a long time to mount wheels in a Dremel. Goes in the collet, finger tighten the collet, and then these guys, this isn't open yet, let me find one. These guys literally push and turn, lock the collet push and turn 90 degrees and when it snaps up it's on they have a little bit of play but not a lot not enough to throw anything off um, and they just they work great they work great so if you don't have one of those I highly recommend one of those uh, the other choice is the screw arbor um, which many of you will have which is actually what that is you see there's a straight head screw in there um, these work but if you're going to use them Use the reinforced ones. You see that's got the fiber reinforcing in it. Use those ones. Don't use these ones. These guys are rated for like 3,000 RPM. And when you get them above that and they get caught in something hard like steel, they turn into powder at best. At worst, they shred apart into little chips. Like to aim for soft places like arteries and veins. So definitely... Throw those guys away. Don't use them for anything. Unless you absolutely have to. Uh, you'll also need a sanding drum for your multi-tool. Now, you might say, the other Matt, I don't have a Dremel yet. Well, get you one. They go on sale all the time. Uh, this one was on Amazon. I think for the whole kit, I paid 75 bucks. 35,000 RPM, fully adjustable. It's a pretty good one. Um, and it came with a kit of all kinds of stuff that I've burned through over the past couple of years. Um, totally worth it. You don't have to start with an actual on-brand Dremel. You can find any, any rotary tool will work. Um, I just recommend staying away from battery-powered ones because batteries die. And I hate that. You'd be in the middle of a project and the battery will die. Uh, the last piece of stuff that we'll need, I can get it off my pile there. The template. A template, some way to attach it to metal. I like white glue because it's water soluble. And it never hurts to have a Sharpie. So I have one of those around. All right, when we come back, uh, I will show you how we're gonna get started. Okay, so let's get started here. Um, first thing we need to do is measure out how long we actually need. Um, this is going to depend on your template and how long you want your pick to be. Um, this one is bent out of shape, so it really doesn't help us for that. Um, but I've done some measuring, and it turns out that we're going to need five inches from the edge of the blade. So, what we'll do is use our flat surface here. By the way, this is a mill vise or a machinist vise. Um, if you're looking for a vise, you can find these fairly inexpensive and they're totally worth every penny. Um, they're heavy enough, you don't have to mount them. They just, they'll stay on your table. Um, so you can pick them up and move them really easy. Um, they're ground flat and they're hardened. So they'll work as a file stop uh, and they'll allow you to get a little bit of precision. So do definitely, if you can get one of those, go for it. So I need five inches on this guy. Put a little nick at five. 
and then we'll straight edge. Now, the name of the game here is heat control. If we start getting this hot, we're going to end up in the same place we were with this one. It's going to be soft, malleable. Our picks are going to bend out of shape and just be generally crappy. So what we want to do is keep this cool. How do we do that? Well, first, I need to fill this cup up with some water. We'll do that in a minute. That way we can kind of quench things as we go. Next, we're going to minimize the use of our high-speed tools. Um, we're going to use them as little as possible. So what does that mean? That means we can use hand tools. We can file stuff. i got a whole bag of files here. Uh, different grades, thicknesses, types, anything your heart could desire there. Uh, you could use a hacksaw, which is actually what I'm going to end up doing. Uh, I'm going to go at it like an apprentice and everything. Uh, or you can use your cutoff disc and just be really careful about stopping and quenching. Um, my cup's not deep enough to quench this, so I'm going to do it the hard way. They're your tools. Use them the way you want to use them. All right. Cool. So now that we got this marked, throw it in the vise and get cut. I'm going to fast forward this so you guys don't have to watch. Note to Matt, fast forward. Okay, now that the earthquake is over, boy, that must have been fun. <laughs> I am going to pick this guy up a little bit. So we've just got our teeth sticking out because the next thing we got to do is get these teeth filed down. Now, again, you can use a file. Probably a good idea. I know these are super hard and I don't want to sit here all day filing. So... I'm going to use this diamond burr. Like I said, it's for cutting glass, but it'll work for this. Um, I'm going to be pretty conservative with my speed, about 20,000 RPM. Here goes everything. Makes quick work of it. Uh, those teeth are gone. It did not get too hot. That's one of the other great things about this vise. Um, is that you, it works as a good heat sink for a lot of this. Um, there's just some cleanup here. So I'll go ahead and clean the burrs off it. Uh, and then show you the next step. Okay, sorry for that little break. Um, I realized I had to resize my template. So... Uh, did that and now I can't find my scissors so I'll do the cutout with a, a blade um, design considerations that I need to look at um, I'm not making a two piece or two sided um, I don't like that I'm making one sided so I need to cut these guys in half um, and then we'll attach them so you guys know how to cut stuff I'll just speed this up and in post
Go tweaker on it. All right. Find it easier to work from the all blank side of our material. Um, side note: be very careful. Even though we knock the teeth off this side, it's still pretty sharp. Um, so you may want to file that a little more than I did, or you'll end up with a, an ouchie. Guaranteed. Um, I am going to use this hardened part for the bottom of my pick, so it'll sit like that. And here's how we do it. Little bit of glue goes a long way. Get it good and covered, even the places where you're not. You're not going to be uh, sticking paper because it comes off easy. Make sure you got enough, which I don't. Doesn't quite go far enough back. Not critical, but it would be nice. Now, I am going to take this all the way to our edge. Make sure it's square. And there we go. There's our template attached to our metal. We're going to give this some time to dry. And then we'll be able to come back and do some work. And we're back. <laughs> Through the magic of television, our glue has dried. Uh, these are good and stuck on there. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to use my thumbnail to scrape off some of the white glue that is not attached to the paper. Uh, and I do that so that when I go over with my Sharpie, I don't lose what I've done. I've got a better way to do this, but I can't find it, so I'll just cheat a little. All right, now we're going to lose that paper and we're going to lose it fairly soon. So what we need to do is give ourselves some lines to work to. Got a collection of these dumb things and I grabbed the wrong one. Okay, let's try this one. We're just going to go up to our lines, even over our lines in a few spots, just so we've got something to work to when we lose our pattern. Let that dry for a moment. Okay, next steps are a process called curfing. You may have heard of this if you've ever done any woodworking and it's really simple we're just going to relieve every couple of millimeters or so like maybe every 10 millimeters uh, we're going to relieve a cut all the way down to our paper and the reason we do that is so that when we come through and try to cut this curve we can bend the blade without breaking it and we'll be able to follow our line. Now this is the non-hard side so this should be an easy process. Now I want to stop here and let you know 
just because we're using the hacksaw doesn't mean we're not creating heat. So be mindful. We don't want this to get too hot. And then lose your vice handle. Now, if you did not have a hacksaw, or if you did not have the patience to use the hacksaw, you can use the cutoff saw. But remember, heat control is the name of the game. So I'm going to turn this down to about 10,000 RPM. We're going to go kind of slow. And I'm going to go... Okay, 15,000. I'm going to go kind of slow and be mindful of my heat. If it gets too hot to touch, it's too hot. You need to stop, let it cool down. If you got a good vice like this, it acts like a good heat sink, so just give it a couple of seconds and it'll be good to go. Okay, we've got that curved, and I only burnt myself once. Before we lose our paper, let's go ahead and make some of our big cuts. more to go. Okay, that brings up a good point. You see how that paint's burnt? And how the metal kind of changed color there? That got too hot. Thankfully, that piece is non-critical, so I'm not gonna worry about it. But, that's why we gotta go slow. All right. Okay. So we've got a very rough shape carved out here. Next step is to get this cutting wheel away from the Maniac. Get this sanding drum set up. Now, this why I love the machinist vice. <sighs> what a work holder. What a work holder. All right. So we've still got our paper template here. And we can still kind of see where everything's at. But like I said, we're going to lose that soon. Probably now. 
But let's start doing a little rough sanding and see if we can get some shape. This wheel is actually an El Cheapo wheel. This drum, sorry. And it's not, I'm not happy with it. So I am going to replace it. If I can remember to turn the screw the right way. Okay. Be right back with you. Lose my head if it wasn't on my shoulders. Right, good and tight. Back to it. Try to get some more shape. We still got to take a lot of meat out right here. I'm keeping my finger on the back of it here so I can tell when it gets hot. So I can stop. Okay. This is pretty heat soaked, so I've got a couple options. I can either stop or I can take the template off now uh, and save the templates because you can reuse them. Duh. Now we'll flint in water. And there we go. We got our rough shape. Real quick tool change there. We'll uh, adjust the camera as well. Move this back a little for you. There, now you should see better. Uh, what I did is I went ahead and put in a wire wheel. And I'm gonna use this wire wheel to knock the paint off and knock some of the burrs down. Like, you we've got some big burrs. Big burrs. So, uh, that's my next step. Again, heat. Watch for heat. If you wanna do a chemical process to remove the paint, um, I actually recommend that. Uh, it's pretty baked on there though. So I think you'll end up with a tool anyway. Um, but a wire brush isn't bad. As long as you control your pressure, you can control your heat pretty well. Plus, we're beyond the template stage, so we can just quench. We don't have to worry about losing any ink or any paper or anything like that. And that's moving a little slower than I want it to. Um, do I still have one of those? Uh, I do. Oh, it's a soft one though. Do I have a hard one still? Sorry, you gotta look at my beard. My, my big chest. Um, well, I may, but I can't find it. The soft one's gonna be hard enough. It's pretty ragged out. 
Oh, there it is. And it's pretty gone. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is a scotch Bright wheel. Also a very cool thing to have. If you don't, not a deal killer. Like I said, you can do this with, you can do this with sandpaper. Uh, in fact, sandpaper might not be a bad idea. Um, definitely going to control your heat better. You know, I just had my stupid wrench, and it's black, and I probably threw it on something that's black, so that's why I can't find it. All right, back when I got my shit together. Okay, back with the Scotch Bright wheel. You don't have to use a lot of pressure with this tool. A little water helps. Alright, now, like I said, if you don't have one of those, um, go ahead and use sandpaper. Um, use a chemical process if you've got some kind of a, a lacquer thinner or paint remover that would remove that. Uh, remember, it's baked on there pretty well, though, so... Uh, I just cleaned it up enough for me. Uh, last steps, and I mean literally last steps, are to profile that tip. Uh, I want it to come up into more of a needle shape. So, what I'm going to do... Somehow get this guy... Oh, look at that. Call it wrench. Don't lose it. Back to our 60 grit wheel here. So before I fire this up, um, Harbor Freight, love them or hate them, they sell an abrasives kit. And it's like 149 pieces, comes with a bunch of stuff in it. Um, if you're short on cash, it will do in a pinch. Um, you get a lot of those fiber cutting discs um, that will actually kind of hold up. You get a lot of grinding wheels. Um, I will warn you, the the uh, hard grinding wheels aren't that hard. So you might not use these wheels, um, but others are okay, and it may change based on your kit. Um, but you get a boatload of neat things like uh, flap wheels, if you've never used a flap wheel, they're pretty good. Um, these generate an enormous amount of heat for being an 80 grit. So I normally just stick to these 60 grit wheels. But this will do an amazing finished job um, if you need. Uh, and they come in a couple of sizes in the kit. This one's really tight. That one's going to generate even more heat. Um, what I was getting at was this kit comes with arbors. And... Call it keys, call it wrenches, things that you lose a lot. Um, it's not going to have the easy lock in it. You won't be able to use these guys. But it is going to have the screw mandrels, and I lose those all the time. And the set's like 15 bucks, I think. Um, and a new mandrel is going to cost you roughly the same. So this way I get some cartridge rolls out of it, I get some flap discs. I get some fiber back cutters and some new minerals. So keep that in mind. Um, and like I said, if you don't have a rotary tool or a Dremel, um, you're not in the lurch. All of this can be done by hand. Um, you can cut hacksaw blades with aviation snips or tin snips. I don't know that I'd do aviation, but tin snips. You can cut them with tin snips. Um, it takes a long time gonna hurt your hands but you can do it um, 
you know, I've got a chainsaw file here. Um, chainsaw file for sure would cut into that bad boy. Um, it's just going to take a lot longer to do it. You saw we actually cut with the hacksaw. <laughs> we cut the hacksaw with the hacksaw. Inception. Um, so, I mean, there's ways to do this without a rotary tool. Um, you're just going to do a lot more work. So, go into it knowing that. I'm going to finish up profiling this. Um, and I'll cut back when it's done. All right, now that this is profiled the way that I want it, it's time to do some cleanup and some sanding to make it look beautiful and function efficiently. So, here's my cheat method for sanding. Some people will put it in a book and I close the book down and I find that really doesn't give it enough tension. I really like that with these guys because they're foam backed so you can really put some pressure on them and they contour really well. But those are 120 we need, or 220 we need to start with 120. So I put the pick in and I clamp it down until the pick won't move and then I back up just a little bit until I can just move it and then it's just in and out. You can see our edges are coming clean. It's really not even a lot of. Here, let's do this. Uh, the paper is 3M, by the way, if you care. See how much more pressure I can put on it with the foam in place? I really like that a lot more. You can get a lot more done. I did go back and remeasure this before we started cutting on it uh, and it measured out with my good sterret measured out at 024 uh, that's 0.24 of an inch for our metric folks um, which is a lot thick um, so I'm hoping that I'll be able to get this down to at least 2.1 or 2.0. I know I said 1.9 in the beginning, but that was based off of a bad set of calipers. Um, Harbor Freight sells these. I call them ballparkers. They'll get you in the neighborhood. Don't use them for anything over a tenth. As in 0.1. See the 220s or 120s doing its job in a nice and smooth. We can switch out. Just run the 220 on a new piece though. The pads are Norton Contour. I highly recommend them for this. Um, don't use them for anything else because I mean, you'll put fingerprints and stuff, but for this, they work great. It's looking pretty good. Don't have any dead spots in it or anything like that. Let's polish the top a little, polish the bottom a little. I didn't say the sandpaper lasted a long time. I said it was great for this. <laughs> All right. So we're pretty good and polished there. Pretty good and polished there. Let's bevel the edges a little. So we don't hook on things. Just give it a slight turn. When you're pulling in and out. And I'll knock the edges off. You can also do that with a file. It's a little quicker, I think. I see a couple of little high spots that are bugging me. Just draw file it. Just 
draw file it. Files cut in a push. There's a cross cut. It'll also cut in a pull. Draw filing is kind of going against the push and pull. You do that when you want to get a, a smooth finish. There we go. Knock them high spots down. Nice and soft. Since I've got this out and I've got a file in my hand, just going to go ahead and break those edges. That'll do more than about 75% of your polishing if you just break those edges. This is what hangs in your keyway. Those hard 90 degree edges. Pay attention to the tip. Again, draw filing it because I want a smooth finish. I don't want the file teeth marks in it. There we go. This guy's ready for a handle of some kind. Um, on these, I don't like wood handles because they're kind of thin. Um, in fact, let's get the Mamma Jamma stare it. I don't think you're going to be able to read that, but we'll get a, a thickness on it. O2O. All right, that's acceptable to me as a pick. I don't know about you, but O2O is pretty good. Um, let's see if we can go a little further. And again, they're your tools. Use them the way you want to use them. If you want to polish these bastards to a luster, go for it. It's more energy than I want to put into it. <laughs> um, I've had some that are polished to a luster, and I really I didn't notice anything um, other than like a really polished pick of, of one of mine that I make, you know, something like that. A satin finish like that with the edges properly broken, um, which I might need to go through and touch that up. Um, did no better than that, so. Um, some people swear by them. Uh, if you want to put that energy into it, more power to you. I don't. Not a bad polish. Just some 220 and some time. I don't think I'm going to go any further than that. I'm going to touch up my edges, I think. Where did I set that file down at? There it is. And like I said, I'm going to cross draw on this file. that in for a closer look. Looks good now. And there we go. She's ready for a handle. So, as I said, I don't like to put a wood handle on these guys. Um, it takes away some of the maneuverability of them. I should have made that six inches maybe. Oh well, it'll work good. The last one worked good. Uh, the last set just got some heat shrink electrical tape. Hmm, I don't know. Uh, I could do wood, and that would give me some length, too. That would feel kind of weird, though. Uh, when I do wood, I just use some boxwood. Um, these are paint sticks. Like, four bucks for 15 of them. If you swing by the paint department, you can pick up one or two for free every time you go to the hardware store. They don't mind. Um, sometimes you get lucky. You get these really thick guys too. These ones work great for hidden tang or through tang kind of things. You can just cut a notch in them and be done. This would be a sandwich style. I'm 
not feeling it. Yep, not feeling it. I'm going to stay true to what John Fail did. His was natural. Uh, I'm just going to put a little e-tape on there for traction. And that's it. If you have any questions, please let me know down below. Um, I will answer questions for as long as I see them come in. Um, YouTube has taken away the direct message functionality, so don't hit me up that way. Um, if you're on Reddit, you can hit me up on Reddit, the other other Matt. You can hit me up on the Discord. Just uh, ping me, and I will come running. Um, otherwise, I'll see you on the next video.